I got something to say to you. Pen rest deck, baby! Let's go! Pen rest deck, now, always, and forever. So if you came to see some beautiful Pantheon content, you come to the right place. Now it's time for you guys to see the exact deck list I used to went for, go from zero rating on Dueling Book to 1,400 in just three days. The deck's insane. It's not just the list, but it's also my special secret. And that my special secret is that I subscribe to myself. So if you subscribe to Truth Gaming, you'll also be amazing at Yu-Gi-Oh! And another secret I have is that I actually, in my mind, play in one of these beautiful Truth Gaming playmats. Uh, I am a demon playmat, so when I blow up my opponent's board, I just th I think of this in my head. So, utilizing those two secrets, and the exact list I'm going to show you guys, it's the best deck in the world! So if you're ready for the video, smash the subscribe button, and let's go! Without question, my number one most favorite list I've ever played since Servant was at three is this one. I absolutely love it. Gigantic difference as you see, Magician's Restage. In the past, I used to say this card sucks. And let me tell you something, I, I was wrong. 100%, this card is remarkable. I used to think it sucked based on its effect. You, how often are you gonna get a level three or lower in the grave, right? But this is a completely different format where everyone's maining Dark Ruler, hence, you need actually, I understand you get Secret Village or whatever, but Restage actually does stuff for you going second. So I'm going to explain the whole deck. It is not a budget deck. As you can tell, there are Triple Souls. This is not a budget deck. In a few days, don't worry, I promise I will release a budget version of Pendulums. Okay? You cannot play this version unless you are willing to play at least two Magician Souls. You don't need three. Play two if you have two. But three is like, it'll be ideal because of restage, it's just how the deck works. But I'm telling you guys, this deck's absolutely ridiculous, especially because there's so many extenders. Now we'll get straight into the deck profile and explain everything in depth. So stay tuned to the end because there'll be big explanations for every single card. And if you're wondering why I'm playing each ratio, I'll explain as I go on. So one servant, one reflection, one magister. Now if you look at each of those three, some of you think, yo, well, Trip, why aren't you playing more magister? That's for one. That's something I get a lot. Well, let me tell you something. Magister, I think, is the number one most overrated card in Pendulums, as well as Institution. I think Institution and Magister absolutely suck. You're going to notice there's no Institution in this deck. Institution is only good if you open it with Cerberus. If Institution and Cerberus are open together, Institution is broken. It's like Exodia. But, Cerb, Ash. Institution instantly becomes absolutely useless. If you don't have Cerberus in your hand and you just have Institution... Institution is absolutely garbage, especially if you're not playing mini jackal with it. It's just a bad card, and I don't like cards that need like need Cerberus. As for Restage, which is infinitely better than Institution, Restage works for basically every single hand that you have. It's never dead. Here's why. So if you open ma Triple Magician Souls, you have the two Blue Boy, two Secrets. You have Chronograph, which makes sure Restage resolves, and I'll tell you exactly why. Because you go Chronograph, you go uh, soul, uh, another card, you go Crowley. So how many hands can make Crowley? Literally every hand, right? So Crowley gets Blue Boy. And then you Secrets, Knowledge, Blue Boy's in Grave. Then you Restage, Special the Blue Boy, and you make a Free Selene. And then the Souls or the Mighty Master in your scale is going to pop the Restage to get you a free Spell Card Negate in Magician Right Hand. So this card is basically like, uh, just negates a Spell Card. So, and it's a spell, it stops Dark Ruler, stops lots of stuff like that. It's very important. That you have this in your deck. Stops Lightning Storm, stops spells in general. So it's very important you have it right now. The fact that Lightning Storm and Dark Ruler are main deck than most, most rock decks. Uh, I'm going to continue. Magister is a brick. If you open it, it sucks. I'm telling you, it actually sucks to open. Because uh, in this build at least. If you're playing no Chronograph, you need to play Triple Magister. Because there's not enough high scales. Because you're playing Chronograph, you have access to lots of high scales now. So there's no need to play more than one Magister. Magister is only there, literally, if Mastery was at zero, let's say Konami banned Mastery. Let's hope they never ban Mastery. But if they ban Mastery, I'm not playing Magister in my deck. I will be playing zero Magister. It is only there because it is searchable by Mastery as a high scale that holds counters. Yes, you could trigger Magister's effect a good amount of times. But if your opponent, let's say you have Serpent and Magister in scale, they ash the, the ash the Serpent. How are you putting monsters in the field? The way you put monsters in the field is chronograph, but then if you put magister and chronograph in the scale and they ash the chronograph, you're going to be stuck with two scale eight, so you can't really do that. Magister does not allow you to push monsters on board because it clogs the scale. 
if Ash gets, uh, let's say you go abductor and magister in the scale, and abductor has lots of counters, you can't put mon you can't put chronograph now. You can't use abductor to search the chronograph, which is also why the two go hand in hand, which moves on to the next one. Magister actually clogs the scale, abductor doesn't. I understand magister could leave the scale. We're playing 21 spells here, so you could trigger it a lot. But if you open magister, there's no card in the extra deck for magister re to resolve with. So if how are you resolving magister? You're not. You need to already have a set up board, which is like a good board. Magister is a win more card. When it resolves, you already win. But if it could, like, typically it'll just brick you. You guys understand that logic? You'll understand after you play a thousand uh, pendulum games this format like I have. You'll understand it. Triple Abductor, Triple Chronograph, these go hand in hand. Absolutely hand in hand without question. Uh, a lot of times I use Abductor to search another Chronograph. So I have Double Chronograph in hand. That way I could summon Double Chronograph and go into a free Crowley. And maybe summon a Jackal or Muddy Master. And as you guys are going to see in future videos, I have lots of different videos where I've literally, literally, jokingly, summon six negates without pendulum summoning multiple times like without pendulum summoning like pendulum summoning I, I might joke to you you could make six seven negates without pendulum summoning very easily because every single card in your deck is literally a draw card or a special summon card they don't break they're just beautiful one cerberus why cerberus is fool's gold you're not allowed to it could easily break you're drawing like 20 times in your turn if you draw into it it sucks if it gets ashed it sucks yes yeah, so when it resolves it's fantastic that's why uh, souls going second a lot of times souls is the best play is souls to send Cerberus and then Cerberus banish after you special it with Selene so after Cerberus banishes a card with Selene then Selene and Cerberus going to access code talker so we've thought of all ways you still get with one Cerberus in your deck you still get to trigger the effect of the Cerberus you could summon it with servant you could summon it send it with souls summon it with Selene then go to access code talker so you could do so many cool stuff like that to clear boards like pinpoint one cards one by one but you have to be very smart and big thinking. All you need is one Cerberus, I'm telling you guys. But in terms of cards that hold counters, you don't need more. I would play a second reflection, but there's already a good amount of low scales in the deck, so there's no requirement for that. And uh, I, if anything, I'd like to play another high scale, but you can't play another Magister, it just sucks. At that point, I might as well play Metal Pulse Wolf Flame with no spell or traps in the deck. Uh, Volt Magister a lot of the time literally does that, except it holds counters for Mighty Master to bounce. I might as well play Citadel. Like, it's just not a very good card. I'm telling you guys, one's all you need. Double Jackal, in case of Desires, it's too good of a card to banish uh, with the one that you play. Two is the perfect number. I firmly believe one, two, three. This number right here is perfection. You want as many Money Masters as possible because, like I said, high scales are uh, hard to come by here. And the effect of Money Master kind of makes going second an easy breezy uh, play. And a lot of people used to play Cerberus to store counters for the Mighty Master. Not required anymore because Selene could store infinity counters for you. Triple Souls. Because Restage and Souls is like an FTK. Activate Souls, said Mighty Master. Souls, then go into Relinquish, Anima. A uh, big reason why I'm playing Restage here. Then Restage, Special the Magician Souls. Restage and the Anima. Sorry, then use Souls Effect to send the Restage and plus something else. And then you add the right hand and draw a card. And then you go into Crowley with the Anima and the Souls, which you made from one card. Then that goes into Crowley, which draws two cards. So drawing these two alone will uh, result, so let's say you just draw Souls and Restage, nothing else, just two card, two card combo, Souls and Restage, Souls send Mighty Master, Anima, Restage, so you draw one because Souls effect, Restage will get the right hand back, then you go into Crowley, Crowley will then get Secrets and Knowledge, you draw four, so you're going to end up with, from two cards, you're going to have a free Link 2, so Souls and Restage will equal a free Link 2, and then four cards in hand, that's insane, that's, that's crazy, that's so good, from two cards, you're going to get four cards in hand and a free Link 2. That's like a plus, plus four. That's a plus four right there. Because the two cards make a Crowley, a Link 2, and then a plus four. That's insane. Plus three of anything. Two Blue Boy, two Secrets, one Knowledge. You want to ensure you draw Blue Boy or Secrets. It literally just guarantees you're playing around stuff. Uh, it is an option to play only one Blue Boy for going set because going second, your opponent could Appalooza you. So I'm debating cutting it only for that specific reason. The Appalooza is uh, basically a staple in the boards of this format. and uh, But I do enjoy... Uh, when Blue Boy gets impermed, you're allowed... Playing two Blue Boy, two Secrets, one Knowledge gives you a cool play. Because you're playing so many cards that are like special summon, special summon, special summon. After you Blue Boy, you could like Souls, for example. And then go into Crowley. And then like, so Blue Boy search Secrets, right? And then you summon the Souls. And then uh, go Crowley to search another again. So it's like, you get to utilize... Because usually if you go Blue Boy, you go Secrets and Knowledge. You lose your Crowley. But in doing so, you get a free plus one by going into Crowley. And then you use the Knowledge to get rid of the card in your hand. So instead of having no card on the field at the end of it, uh, instead of having one Souls, you have a free Crowley instead. And then the Souls is going to be summoned back eventually with Cross Sheep or with uh, Selene or with Magician Restage to be able to utilize its effect. 
or you can use this puck right away. But that's why having two blue boys is very nice. A super in-depth video for you guys here. Two secrets with knowledge. One, uh, don't play double knowledge, like three secrets. I tried that build before. It's absolutely horrible. Don't play it. I'm telling you guys, if you want the most uh, like perfect build, don't play Mythical Beast. Don't play Triple Magister. Don't play all those bubble cards. This is the perfect ratio. And if you play without misplaying, which is a big issue for you guys, because even I misplay all the time with it, uh, but it's not more so you're misplaying going first. It's more so misplaying with what the meta is supposed to be like. So just be very smart in terms of how you're making your plays. And this is the absolute best deck. I'm uh, starting to the void, triple desire, triple allure. You need all these without question. If you're not playing allure, please max it at three. It's one of the best cards in this deck. Triple mastery, one instant insta fusion, very good. Only play millennium eyes, don't play more than that. It's only one card in your deck, but it's very good because it's another card that works with restage. And on top of that, it stops hand traps and master roll five insta fusion as a big buff. And uh, yeah, millennium eyes is good, especially because you can link it away and link it, but you can keep summoning it back with Selene as many times as you want. And it can be summoned back with cross sheep and it triggers cross sheep, so it's very cool. Triple restage, one uh, right hand. As I said, this is absolutely insane combo, I absolutely love it. Uh, you just get a free reborn and you send it to add a free card and a free negate and they're all continuous spells So one restage adds you two spell counters. So imagine the people in the world playing bestiari This card gives you more count as many card counters as bestiari does except it gives you a free summon and a free negate It's just insane <laughs> like and it's way better than institution because most of the time souls is just gonna send institution without you even drawing a card off institution You might as well get a free special and a free ad like that's insane plus two souls restage is an FTK Side deck, uh, you side these set, these eight against uh, rock deck. You would take out these four, one instant fusion, one souls, one blue boy, one secrets. Uh, you put in those eight, because Appaloosa is typically going to stop your card there. Uh, for back row, you have Dino Wrestler, uh, Red Reboot, Triple Denko. And because you have space, you don't need exchange anymore because you already have the main deck out of Dark Ruler. And your triple system done. And you're always going to draw one of these four. You have four cards in a deck that's like, let's see how much draw cards you have. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 16 draw cards and a 24 card deck, four of them are outs to Dark Ruler. So Dark Ruler means shit all in this deck. Extra deck, so, more, so much more tight because of the new cards that came out. I really want three Selene. I had, I had a video, I was going to post it. I don't think I posted it yet on my Patreon, but showcasing that if I had th a third Selene, I won in a certain match. I won in a different match. And it's just a very good card to be playing three of because it's the best card in your deck. Every single turn one, you're going into two Selene. Every single turn one, you're going into two Selene. If two Selene turn one every turn one, no matter what, because of cross sheep, a vortex, every time two. Now, after turn two, after turn one, you need a third one for the follow up. So, a lot of times I'm missing that follow up, uh, which I had to make space for a third Selene. I've yet to figure out how yet, because everything else is very good. Crowley, Daybreaker, cross sheep, all extremely important. I'd rather a third Selene over like literally every one of them, to be honest. Uh, Mascarina, uh, Palooza, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn. Boral Sword, Axis Code Talker. This card's new and this card's absolutely broken. Holy shit. Selene, summon anything. Axis Code Talker, game. 5,700, 5,300 attack, pop your whole field. Uh, another reason why we're playing Axis Code Talker is Relinquish Anima. So, Relinquish Anima, a lot of times people are not seeing it coming. I guess now, because the combo L Lich is very normal. But a lot of times, the opponent can't even do anything about it. Uh, especially with the Appaloosa and stuff there. And anything. And you have so many level 1s. With Instant Fusion, Triple Soul. Souls are searchable by half your deck. So you use Relinquish Anima to get rid of it. And anytime you have an opportunity to use Anima, use it. Because after you dis after you put up your big board, your opponent will, let's say they clear half of it, but they can't do the rest and you need to OTK now. Uh, you go into Axis Code Talker and ensuring you have Relinquish Anima there uh, allows you to be able to use Axis Code Talker for another negate, uh, another pop, sorry. So Relinquish, uh, typically Axis Code Talker will send Selene and you'll have Crowley, uh, Cross Sheep, and uh, uh, Rel Relinquish Anima, which is three different pops, so that's amazing. Uh, one Millennium Eyes, uh, oh, sorry, actually, Crowley's a dark and this is a dark, but depending on the situation, I have two plus pops at least, and that's enough to win. Uh, and then one Millennium Eyes, absolute Vortex. That's the video. I absolutely love this deck. It's my favorite version of Pendulum in an extremely long time, and I'm extremely confident with it. I ended up taking this list of PPG. I started off one and two because I didn't know how to use the cards properly. Both my losses, I should have won. Uh, one of the losses, I just misplayed against Cyber Dragon. Not it was Cyber is such a shit deck. I didn't know how to use these cards properly. I just threw them in last second to test it out. And then after that loss, I won the next six. And the reason why I'm saying I won the next six is I lost one of them technically, but it's because the judge made a mistake of a call and that mistake literally cost me the whole match. So I should be 7-1. Uh, the judge ruled that Relinquish Anima will be will gain the attack of a token. And the token took the Nibiru token at 10,000 attack. I would have won that game, but I ended up losing, but it's totally fine. Uh, it ends up 6-2. 
which is obviously not the result you want. You want the top, so you want to at least go uh, six one one because six one one will top. But ended up whatever, it's fine. You're gonna win the next one. It is a new deck that I took to the tournament, but now that I understand the deck properly, I won the next five all against meta decks, easy slaps, and they're all good players. I'll be showcasing in the future different uh, replays because I'm trying to play the deck with Restage, which I think as long as Dark World is main deck, you should be playing this card. That's the video. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in the next video. And don't forget, before we leave, make sure to get your beautiful Trip Gaming playmat in the description down below on TripGaming.com as well. Make sure to sign up for the Patreon. You can get better at Pendulums and become a pen god yourself. And don't forget to subscribe because at 30,000 subscribers, we'll be releasing a crazy Odd Eyes video. Hope you guys like the video. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.